Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. On today's episode, I'm going to take a little departure from the intermediate build series, and we're going to talk about layered constructions, whether they be Sanmai or Kumai or Gomai constructions, basically layering steel where there's a core and kind of a mirrored layers on either side. Because I always get the question, how thick do I make the layers? So we're going to talk about that today. Um, and this question came from my buddy Nick Tobin, uh, aka Pickle Cutters on Instagram. So we've been talking about it. So I figured um, I would cover this in a video. Uh, go follow Pickle Cutters. Uh, I'll leave his link down in the description. Uh, he's a good guy and go check out what he does. So let's go down to the table and take a look. All right, so when it comes to layered constructions, the question everybody asks is this. So we're gonna cover this as one of the main topics of today's discussion. So what thickness of stock should you start with? That depends on the number of layers you have and the final thickness. So really, we're gonna answer this question by answering those. What I like to do is use the rule of thirds, meaning you're gonna use a third of the width of the billet as the core, the third as the cladding, and then the other third is the other half of the cladding. So why a rule of thirds? Here's a good example. If we just draw a rough diagram here, okay, when you do your bevel, and it doesn't matter how, as long as this is proportional, let's just say it's a full flat grind. I'm gonna draw from here to here. Okay, this demarcation is where your line is going to be, okay, so your core is here. So that means if this was a kumai or just a sanmai, the line is going to be a third up your, your uh, bevel, okay? It doesn't matter how high this is, it's going to be a third no matter what you do. So that's why I like to use the rule of thirds. Now, I might change this a little bit if I wanted, if, say, the Damascus was in the core. If the core was Damascus and I wanted to show more of the core, I might do something a little different, make the core thicker, so that when I do this, I'm going to have more of this exposed. So it really depends... Um, but generally, I like to use the rule of thirds. Okay, so that's number one. You need to figure out from your end billet how much you want exposed and where you want the, the core. So now let's make an example. I'm going to use thousandths of an inch uh, as, my, uh, as my size here, but you could easily do this in metric. So let's say that I'm going to use an eighth of an inch or 0.125 inch stock, which means I'm going to have 0.375 inch total, because I'm going to have this as my core and uh, my two sides of the cladding. So this times three, you're going to get 0.375. Now, okay, so each of these is 0.125. So now you need to decide how thick do you want to make the final billet, okay, when you forge it down. If you were to make this 0.125 or eighth of an inch final billet, that means you're going from 375 down to 0.125. In other words, you're shrinking it by a third, which means that your core is only going to be a third of this, so just over 0.04 inches, okay? This is a problem. I don't like to have my core less than 0.06 or roughly a sixteenth. That's a really, really narrow margin of error because if you get the core off even a little bit or from forging or whatever, there's a very, you're gonna get some of your cladding on the edge. So to combat this, 
instead of going down to 0.125 or a third, I would take this down to 3 16 or 0.1875. Okay, so half. So now 0.125, okay, because each of these are going to get cut in half, you're going to have about a 0.06 core. So these are the calculations you need to do based on your starting widths and your core. Let's use Pickle Cutter's example. He went with a 1 inch or a 1.0 um, core, or sorry, total billet, and the core was 0.25. So the problem here is if he takes that 1 inch billet and even goes down to a quarter, okay, so that's going to cut a quarter, you know, cut that in half, you're going to get 0 0.06 inches, okay, because it's going to be this divided by 4. That's okay, but quarter inch is pretty thick for most knives. You're not really going to want a quarter inch knife for most uses. Then, which is okay, because maybe you're going to end up grinding off some of the cladding, okay, which is fine, because then your cladding can be thinner. Just remember, when you do this, it's just going to change where your core, where your line is, okay? And I do this a lot where sometimes if, you know, I, especially if Damascus or the pattern I'm, I have is on the core, so that your, your, your core is Damascus, then sometimes I do thin this out. Because remember, you can't grind out the center. You can only grind off the edges. So hopefully you guys got something out of this and answers this question, what thickness of stock should I start with? It depends on the width of the whole billet and what your final um, thickness is going to be. And sometimes you want to gauge that final thickness based on what you have in your core. Hey folks, wanted to take a pause here and talk about our sponsor, Maritime Knife Supply. If you're a knife maker, they have everything you need from steel all the way to hydraulic presses and everything in between. They're up in Canada, but you can shop in U.S. prices and pay in U.S. dollars. And they'll ship it anywhere in the U.S. or elsewhere. So go take a look at Maritime Knife Supply. The link's down in the description. So that was a lot of math for some people. So let's do this in shapes and sizes. If you were to do the eighth inch, like I was saying before, so let's say I'm going to use this carbon fiber. It's eighth inch. Let's say, pretend... This is high carbon steel or whatever, whatever my cladding is. And I'm going to put eighth inch. Okay, so there is my core. I'll do this so you can see it. Okay, so if this is my billet, then I'm not, I'm only going to take this down to three sixteenths. Okay, and then I can grind off the sides. If I want it thinner, I'll just grind off the sides so that I don't make the core too thin. Okay, what you don't want to do is forge this down to one eighth. Your, this core is going to be way too thin at that point. Okay, so it's okay to grind off the sides. Remember that diagram of where your, um, where your bevel is going to be to find out where your, um, where your line is between your core and your cladding. Uh, another thing you can do is just make the cladding thicker. So say this is my cladding, I can do that. Then you'll be grinding less off, but remember then your line is going to be way higher up your, um, your billet when you do this, which is fine too. You just need to understand where you're going. It also depends what kind of grind you're going to do. Because if you're just doing like a, you know, a partial grind that only goes halfway up, it's going to be a much steeper bevel. So that's already going to bring your line down. So that's why you may want a thicker core, because then you're going to go through your cladding much quicker, right? Uh, some other things, um, sometimes I'll use thin stock, like this is 0 0.049, 15, and 20. Uh, and I'll use that um, sometimes and do multiple, if I'm doing like a, a go-mai, I might do something like that. When I'm talking about cladding, 
here on the on the other diagrams, I meant everything that is not your core. You can have five layers um, that make up this side. That's you know when I'm talking rule of thirds, I'm talking a third. All of this is the third. Then the core. Then all of the stuff on the other side. Okay. Um, remember an, a note about kumai. Um, so when you're doing copper, remember you're not forge welding. And it's okay if, if you're, let's say we're doing a regular sand mai, it's all steel, I'm going to be forge welding steel. If I don't have thick enough core, I can just take two pieces together, okay? And then say that's my core and then do the, let's say I was doing this on either side, okay? That's fine because my core is going to get forge welded together. If you're doing a kumai, you cannot forge weld any steel. You cannot have multiple layers of steel together. You can't do this because you're never going to get the billet hot enough to forge weld this without melting out the copper. So either get thicker stock or forge weld this first and then put it in so that you have your copper here and then you're cladding and whatever you're going to do. So remember, no, no steel back-to-back uh, -back inside of a kubai. So I hope this video on layered constructions helped you guys out, um, certainly on forming your billet and getting you started in the right direction with the right thickness of steels uh, for your core and for your cladding. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on the next one.